Citric acid and the citrate are incredibly important tools for kidney stone sufferers. Plus, it's readily available in whole citrus fruits like lemon and limes. Unfortunately, more than 99% of citrate products on the market are manufactured and not from citrus fruits. In fact, the way that citric acid is produced is one of the most insidious manufacturing secrets that I've ever come across. To make matters worse, it's all coming from one of the most evil pharmaceutical companies the world has ever seen. Stick around for this video to learn what you can do to protect yourself if you're using citrate as part of your kidney stone prevention plan. Hi, I'm Joey Weichman and welcome to Stone Relief. The more that I research topics relating to kidney stones, the more that I discover about the world. And unfortunately, most of what I learn is incredibly concerning, especially when it comes to manufacturing processes for our food, cosmetics, and medications. While there are definitely a few well-intentioned companies out there who do their research and have genuine regard for their consumers, the majority don't give a shit. Profits and power are the motivation, and the public is left to pay the price. Not only in the terms of the ludicrous prices they charge, but more importantly, with our health. There is no shortage of examples if you're paying attention. Things like carrageenan in our food, causing cancer. Circulose, a sweetener, causing cancer too. And most memorably for me, BPA in plastic bottles, also leading to cancer. The consequences of these dangerous substances have been regarded as generally regarded as safe by the FDA, and the long-term impacts have truly yet to be seen. And most of what's been uncovered has been just in the last few decades. But the long-term impact of these ingredients in our food and our cosmetics and our household items and medications is much larger than we know. And only time will tell. And unfortunately, as kidney stone sufferers, tools like citrate have been prescribed because these things help us prevent kidney stones. And citrate products, something that is naturally available in whole foods, has been adulterated and made dangerous. But before we get into that deep rabbit hole, let's review what citric acid and citrate are used for with regards to kidney stones. So the best way that you can think about citric acid or citrate, a little bit interchangeable here, is it's a little bit like Iron Man's armor. It's super protective in its role against kidney stones. And there's a couple different ways that it plays this protective role. So the first thing is, is it can slow down and stop stone formation. And the way that it does that is it is binds with calcium. And the other way, and this is why it's most commonly prescribed for people who are suffering from kidney stones, uh, even if the kidney stone type that you suffer from really doesn't have any impact with this, a lot of urologists go, oh, yeah, here's a prescription for potassium citrate or K-Sit, whatever brand it might be. And primarily, again, those two mechanisms First of which is alkalizing the urine. So if you're suffering from like a uric acid kidney stone, or maybe it's a calcium oxalate stone that just seems to be forming very, very rapidly, or you're getting multiple kidney stones like this a year, neutralizing your urine is a good move because crystallization is maximized in calcium oxalate stones uh, when urine is acidic pH, less than seven, and uric acid stones will only form in acidic urine. So this makes sense, it is a powerful tool. And then secondly, as I kind of touched on before, it's used for citrate therapy with regards to calcium oxalate stones because the citrate will bind with free floating calcium uh, that can be found in your urine that's not bound to any other kind of molecule that's also floating around. And there's a positive and a negative charge and they kind of stick together like magnets when given time and they are super saturated in your urine. So when you use citrate, citrate binds with calcium in eliminates this or slows this process down a little bit. So it is an incredibly powerful tool. Now, as I had mentioned in the, the intro to this, citrates uh, are naturally found in citrus fruits. And there's a, a wide range where this is found. Really, it can be found in any citrus fruit, but the highest concentrations have been found in lemons and limes. Now, there's a study out there that talked about how grapefruit juice, juice in particular, not whole fruit, uh, had more citrate than lemons or limes, but a little bit suspect to that, and that's not that well proven. So I'm still going to stick with lemons and limes. Now, this is also in terms of citric acid, not necessarily from a kidney stone perspective, but as we're going to talk about a little bit later, why this can be potentially dangerous is it's everywhere. Not only is it in the foods that we eat as a preservative and also a flavoring to kind of give it that sour aspect, but it's also used in cosmetics and other household items uh, that are kind of framed as being natural. And we're gonna talk about the next chapter why this is potentially problematic, so stick around. Okay, so let's talk about why citric acid in the most manufactured form is gonna be problematic. And probably some of you have been already been looking at this over my shoulder as I was talking about this in the last chapter, and you've already got questions floating around your head. The major problem with this is that 99% of the citric acid you find on the marketplace, including the stuff that they prescribe 
to kidney stone sufferers, uh, even if it's labeled as natural, uh, it's being sourced from black mold. And black mold has a whole host of negative health consequences associated with it. But that's not what we're talking about here. I don't want that to get confused because a lot of people will confuse that. The studies that I'm referring to in this video here are specifically speaking to citric acid consumption in comparison to citrates or citric acid consumed from natural whole food sources like fruits, citrus fruits in particular. So there is a big difference. So some of the things that they found, and this is not a comprehensive list. This is just kind of like the big five that they found. So allergies. Um, most people think that they're just, oh, I'm just, I have allergies. Most of it's due to the foods that you're eating that are causing inflammation levels to rise and it's causing an, an outward expression of allergies and so your body is trying to handle this overload. But it's really can be due to some other things that you don't even think about, like citric acid in the foods you're drinking, the foods you're eating, or the, the soda that you're drinking. It's everywhere, and it can be problematic. Inflammation, and this is, I, I linked to allergies as well, but inflammation, this can be things like joint pain. Um, you know, you, you should not feel joint pain on a normal basis. If you do, you should change your diet and take a look at the things that you're putting on or in your body. Um, you know, I give this example a lot when I'm talking to people, but my dad, he's, uh, you know, in his upper 70s right now, and, you know, he's a very active guy, but up until about four years ago, uh, he would have to take aspirin throughout the course of the day because he would just suffer from joint pain and he was tired and fatigued. But then, just a little bit before I went carnivore, he did as well. And <laughs> guess what? He doesn't have soreness and joint pain anymore. He doesn't take aspirin anymore. He plays tennis for several hours a day at a very high level. Um, he doesn't suffer from any of those conditions anymore. And he's almost 80 years old. There's something major to that, and he's not the only one. So there are some problems here. So outside of those things, there's respiratory issues that are obviously associated with black mold, and then abdominal cramping, a whole other things. And then the big one, the big C word, cancer. And again, these things were only shown to be present in individuals who are using manufactured citric acid from black mold. They did not see the thing, same theme occur when people were consuming citrus, uh, citric acid or citrates from whole food sources like fruits. So this should be shouting to us that there is a problem here. Now, the other big issue that I take with this is that most of this stuff the citric acid that's out there on the market that you're being prescribed if you're having citrate therapy for your kidney stones is manufactured by Pfizer. Yeah, the, the same assholes who were behind the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and all the deadly vaccinations that they forced upon the population through the government. It, I hate these people and they are behind a tool that we are using as kidney stone sufferers to try to help us prevent our kidney stones and it is causing a whole host of other issues and again if you've been following me for any time you know that all of this is not unintentional it is intentional and it is all meant to be a part of a system that keeps you as a customer and a patient of the medical system so they continue to prescribe you new drugs and have you have surgeries for certain things it is all intentional do not be fooled now rant over Next thing, another thing that I've got an issue with, the FDA, those guys, they classify things like citric acid that comes from black mold as generally regarded as safe. And <laughs> the other problem with this is that in order to be included as generally regarded as safe, they self-certify. There's like no oversight to this whatsoever. Now, I know that there's some new legislation that is either in the process of passing or has passed already, but Things like citric acid, there's a cutoff date. I think it's 1958 or anything that's produced back before 1958 doesn't get rolled into this new legislation. So they're kind of like just grandfathered in to do whatever the hell they want uh, with untold consequences, not to mention long-term consequences. These are just short-term things that happen within like 30 minutes of consuming it. So it is absolutely wild to me that this is allowed, but it, it, when you truly take, you know, take it, <laughs> stock of what's happening in the government and the medical system and how all these things are tied together with big corporations, it, it does make sense. But a few other examples just to, to wet your whistle that I mentioned briefly in the intro. So things like carrageenan, we're regarded as generally regarded as safe. They're a part of the same GRAS program. What do we come to find out? Well, <laughs> it causes cancer. 
Sucralose, the sweetener that was supposed to replace sugar. It was this miracle thing. Well, God's this cancer. And then what really hit home for me are things like BPA. These are things like found in Nalgene bottles I used to carry around as a kid. It was the cool thing to carry around when I was in high school and younger. You know, you fill up your water and you just carry around your Nalgene bottle. We'd stick all of our stickers on it and all that kind of stuff. Like we were kids, but BPA, linked to cancer. And the problem goes deeper than this because as soon as that has enough people complain and enough people die and enough lawsuits are filed, they're like, oh my goodness, well, we better invest some research in this and find out what the hell is going on. And then they go, oh, it's bad. And then they just change the way that they manufacture things. Like BPA, oh, they may have changed a single molecule in that chemical construction of that plastic. And they're like, oh, it's something new. It's no longer a problem. You don't need to worry about cancer anymore. But the problem is, is that those simple changes aren't good enough because guess what? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, we're going to have the same level of lawsuits and the girl are going to go, oh, we didn't know. We're so sorry. Bullshit. They absolutely do know and they're using the system to their advantage and they are causing you and me significant health consequences that further feeds the medical system and the whole big sham of the thing that is happening that I just referred to. So what can you do about it though? Stick around for the next chapter and we're going to dive into it. Just a reminder, this information is available in written form on our website. Find the link below in the description. All right, so I hope after that last chapter, you're as fired up about this as I am, because I, if you can't tell, I'm fired up. I'm pissed off because I did not know this about citric acid before I started doing this research to make this blog and this video. So this is all new information to me because I was just carrying along thinking it was from citrus fruit, uh, like most of you probably thought as well, not coming from black mold or other some other deleterious type of source. So the biggest thing that you can do, and I didn't put it up on this board, is just stop patronizing the people who are causing you pain. So don't buy any more of their pharmaceutical medications. Don't buy anything more with a you know citric acid, synthetic, undefined source type of label on it if you're putting it inside your body or on your body for that matter. Your dollars that you spend are the most powerful tool that we have as the general public to influence what happens with these big mega corporations and governments and all that kind of stuff. That is the most powerful tool. Now, but more practically though, if you're trying to go through this and the thralls are trying to prevent kidney stones, Get your citrate from citrus fruits. Now there's a couple different formats that you can get this in. So not only can you use whole fruits, you know, but I said lemons and limes are probably the most potent sources and I don't see too many people slicing up lemons and limes and just eating them like they would an orange slice. So probably more likely you're gonna be consuming those things in fruit juices. And this is okay for a period of time. Now I personally did this when I was trying to combat kidney stones before I knew about diet connection to kidney stones. So I did this for a long time. And then I started to realize that eh, my teeth are getting really sensitive and I can't drink anything cold and they just kind of feel like they're wearing thin. And that was actually the case because the acid from these citrus juices was starting to wear away at my enamel. So where do you go from there? Look at capsules. Capsules are a great option. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of them out there on the market and very few of them are actually organic. Uh, and that's significantly important because if you're not getting it from an organic source, there are a whole other host of contaminations that are outside of the scope of this video, but things like glyphosate and all the other types of fertilizers that they use that are poisonous to human beings and animals and insects alike on that fruit. So organic is important. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. They are misinformed or uninformed. So that's really tough to find. And this leads me to my last thing that I want to leave you guys with. Because of this, and I'm so fired up, we're going to be making our own citrate, citric acid type of product to be used in replacement for any kind of a pharmaceutical product that's out there on the market. Um, we are hard at work right now trying to figure out how to get the MEQ or millicu equivalent of the citrate that you'd find in a pharmaceutical product through natural means. So within the next few months, stay tuned to the channel uh, for more updates on this product, but we will have a product that is 100% organic, safe, tested by multiple third parties to make sure that there are no contaminating ingredients like glyphosate or anything other that would potentially be harmful to you uh, or the ones that you love in that product that you can rely upon as a part of your strategy to either alkalize your urine if you've got acidic urine you're trying to battle your acid stones or uh, calcium oxalate stones 
or as a part of citrate therapy to manage blocking out the calcium binding with oxalate for calcium oxalate stones. Super excited about this, very, very passionate about it. And trust me, you'll be hearing much more from us in the near future. Are you spending thousands of hours of surgery just to end up with another kidney stone a year later? Learn everything you need to know to say a big you to your kidney stones inside our free community at kidneystones.com.